Durham is reviewing Max Lieberson's book, The Boat They Laughed At. Well, Max Lieberson and his book, The Boat They Laughed At, good title because people did laugh at it and who wouldn't laugh at it? There it was, you know, a concrete 38 foot schooner rig thing uh, mouldering in, away in the, in the sort of fag end of Docklands in London. <laughs> It was hard by the XL Centre, where, of course, the flashy London boat show used to take place with all its wonderful craft. Um, very much in the shadow of that was Max's Gloria, this ferro-cement thing, uh, which looked like a kind of cross between a, a factory for turning out mushy peas and a serial killer's den. You could dance, difficult to tell, really. But Max is a great character, and, and anything he got hold of he turned into 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 some useful item i mean the stove on there was some old um calagas canister that he cut a section out of <laughs> and made it and made a cooker out of it that's max for you the engine that came out of a a, a, a digger i think that been used probably to unearth the footings for xl who knows but uh it wasn't really meant to be in the boat but max found it in there and it wasn't bolted down properly um, so he used those straps, you know, those funny straps lorries, lorry drivers used to hold their cargoes on those things, strapped it down with that and off he went. Brilliant. From Thurrock um, down, well, he went down River first from London Docklands to Thurrock Yacht Club, where he was a member, where I knew him from. And he set off from there, went to the Solent, uh, picked up Ed Whelan, the late Ed, Ed Whelan, lovely guy, um, who was the RYA's uh, QC, top lawyer. So, you know, you can laugh at Max and you can laugh at his exploits, but a lot of people who know Max take him seriously uh, and they know that he's a top sailor. So Ed joined him and I think one or two others and off they went uh, across the Atlantic. Um, and about halfway across, they were becalmed. Max went over the side with his snorkel on and had a look underneath. And he said he, it was the first time he'd seen the bottom because he couldn't afford to have her hauled out. So he used to just dry her out in any old creek he could find. So this was the first time he'd actually seen the bottom. And to his dismay, there was a hole in it, um, which he discovered was plugged with Essex mud. So without saying any more, uh, they got to the Caribbean, uh, where he eventually had a hauled out and found, sure enough, it was a hole. And it was plugged with Essex mud, <laughs> which he replaced with more concrete uh, and came back. But by the time he turn around to come back the engine had finally failed the uh the ratchet straps that were holding it uh, onto its engine beds had failed it didn't work so he thought well, i've got to sail the blooming thing back i might as well take the propeller off it's only going to be a drag factor so this great big three-bladed prop he took off and sailed her back so he made an atlantic circuit in this in a boat that most people wouldn't even you know would think twice about i mean the commuter trains used to pass it every day in and out of london as it moulded in this in this old in this old yard, but Max, to Max's eyes, it was something beautiful, and it was something that gave him a true adventure for fifteen hundred quid. And what's the book like, Dick? Book's brilliant. I mean, it it tells it like it is. I mean, Max doesn't mince mince his words, um, and his prose is free flowing, and it's like a kind of flow of consciousness, really. The, the, that consciousness being from a soul who can can solve any problems, who ha doesn't sort of suffer fear, uh, who's a top sailor, comes from a, a line of uh, Devonian trawlermen, uh, and has been out there and done it. So yeah, it reads very well. It's very con it's very clear. It's very accessible. And it'll put the fear of God into you. So was she the right boat to cross the Atlantic in? Well, I think any boat's the right. <laughs> it's just almost any boat's the right boat. It's the boat you got at the time. I've seen so many people who've been waiting for the perfect boat, building the perfect boat, have never actually gone. So, you know, yeah, so in some ways she was the perfect boat because she was the one I had. 
Yeah, well, that's, that's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Were you not frightened about not having an engine and crossing the Atlantic in a concrete boat? Yeah, I suppose I was, but um, it was a challenge. And I, I'm so glad I did. Uh, it was one of the best moments of my life, the best, best periods of my life. And I, I can't, you know, if, if there's one thing that I think everybody would benefit from, is going out into the ocean without an engine. And it, it brings you face to face with yourself. And not a lot of people get that chance to find out who they are and uh, find out what they can actually do. Um, it may be a stronger person, and I'm really glad to have had the opportunity. And as well as that, you know, the, the real adventures you have is not when you're rich and you're in these good places. It's when you're, you're down at the bottom of the pile and you meet the most, the real people, the most friendliest people. Meet these people and to commune with the sea, if you like which is an incredible place. I'm so lucky to have had the opportunity. Mm -hmm.